Hey everyone, thank you so much for a really good response on the Angular Signal Store video that you can see right here. And some of you asked how to work with HTTP calls using the Angular Signal Stores. Well, here we go. In the previous example, we implemented this particular whole application in which we used Signal Store to work with the to do's application. So you can add to do's, for example, here, you can mark them as uh, done or not, and you can also filter based on active completed and whatnot you can also refresh this now this uses signal stores but also saves everything into local storage so if i refresh everything is still saved to code along with this particular tutorial you can go to my angular cookbook second editions code repository and i've just pushed this particular branch called signal store http start and when you switch to it by doing git checkout and the branch name you are at the state where you can run this application and if i go to my editor i can show you what command to run so from the project root you need to run npm run serve and ng dash cc dash signals when you run this this app is going to be served on localhost 4200 and then we can get started we are going to use the http calls in this video and we are going to use the service called json placeholder which is a really good resource for just using fake apis and we are going to use this to do's endpoint to get some to do's and basically work with those fortunately this has the same signature as what we have in our application for example if i look at the contract here you can see that every to do has a user id id title and completed now going to our code base if you go to start apps chapter one and then ngcc signals inside here you are going to find the to do's store.ts if you open this you will see that on top, we also have a signature for each to-do item. When you control click it, you can see every to-do has an ID, title and completed. So we don't just have the user ID, but that's perfectly fine. I'm not going to go through all of this because you can watch the previous video to understand how we implemented this, but I'm going to briefly explain what's happening here. When our application starts, it goes inside the to-do store and in the with hooks. Inside here, we have the on in it. And here we actually load the to-dos from local storage. So as soon as the application starts, it looks at the local storage, brings the saved to-dos here and then patches it to the to do's variable in our store. So then we have our store having the to do's array and our components can start using those. If you go to the app component right here, you're going to see that we import or we inject this to do's store. And as soon as we do that, we essentially have the store dot to do's variable, which is being used inside our HTML. So if I scroll up here, you can see that we have here the store dot filtered to do's, which is a computed property. So if I go to to do's store, and here I go with computed. You can see that we have filtered to do's and based on if I'm using all or completed or active, this is going to look at the whole array of to do's and then return back the filtered version of it based on my current filter. With that said, let's talk about how can we implement HTTP calls in here. Now, the first thing would be, do I want my to do's when my application starts to be loaded from the storage or do we want to get them from the API? Now, there are different strategies that are used in applications, for example, freshness, and then there's also performance. When we talk about freshness, we often go to the API first, and then if the API fails, then we go to the fallback or the offline storage. In terms of performance, we first load from our storage or our offline data. And then if it's not available there, then we go to the HTTP call. In our case, we're gonna go for freshness. So we have fresh data from the API, which means that here we want to not load things from local storage, but rather from the HTTP call. Now, in order for any Angular application to work with HTTP, you need to go to app.config.ts. And here we need to provide the HTTP client. So here I can go and say, provide HTTP client. And once you do so, we are good to go with including HTTP client in our to-do store. Now, as you might know, in Angular services, we can use the inject function to inject our services, just like we are doing in app component. So since to-do store itself is a service, we can inject it in our component. Now in to-do store itself, we can inject the HTTP client. How? If we go to with hooks here in the on init one, we can actually do it just like this as the AI is suggesting. So we can use HTTP equals inject HTTP client. And here we can then import the rest of the stuff as well. So we're going to import this and we are going to also import HTTP client. Now that we have this, instead of doing this to do from storage, we are going to use the HTTP call. So I'm going to actually cut this. And then here we can do HTTP get to do item. So I'm going to copy some of this code, but not all of it. And then what I'm going to do here is we are saying we're going to do HTTP.get and we're going to get back an array of to do items. This is the endpoint that we are trying to 
hit but i'm going to change this a bit to get lesser data because right now i think we have 200 to do's that come back from this api so once we have the to do's back then we can essentially do the patch state so we can go up from here and now here since we'll get the to do's we are going to actually mark this as to do's and let's fix by removing this particular bracket now since this is an http call things might go wrong as well so what happens when we are not really able to fetch something from the http call for example if i save this now and go to my application you will see automatically that we are getting all the to do's from the http client and if i show you via inspection as well we can go and see what we get back so if i clear this refresh and go and filter by fetch xhr you can see that we hit this endpoint to do's and we get back the response just like this so if i go to response you can see all the data that we are getting from here i want to change the api as i mentioned to not get 200 different to do's but a few of them so i'm gonna go actually and change this to to do's and we are going to essentially say users slash one slash to do's so json placeholder has a users object as well and we can get a particular users to do's with id1 now if i see we have lesser to do's and not 200 so if i open this you can see i think we get about 20 or something yeah we get about 20. now the interesting part is that if this network call fails we don't have any to do's at all but we wanted to have a fallback from local storage right and to illustrate this let's say if i change this endpoint to something that doesn't really work i'm gonna save this and now you see that we don't have any to do's and this is bad because i had to do's but I got them removed because of the way we have structured the code at the moment. However, the way it should have worked is if the API call failed, then we should have had at least the to do's that we had previously shown here. And in order to do so, what we should do here is that if the API call fails, we should have a pipe here and we should do something like catch error, what the AI is suggesting at the moment. So in this particular situation, I'm going to also import the off operator from RxJS directly from here and then what we want to have is if we fail this api call then i want to have my code that actually fetches things from to do storage and then instead of this uh, empty array i can say to do st from storage and save this now i'll fix my endpoint first so we actually get to do's so now you can see that we got the to do's and as soon as we get them we essentially save them within the storage or the local storage now let's say if the api call fails the next time would i still be able to show them from storage let's check it out so i'm going to change this to an endpoint that doesn't work so if i save this and i'm just going to make sure we don't have anything else that messes it yeah it's good and now if i try to do this let's see what happens so if i go here you'll still see that now we still got this as emptied and that is a bit disturbing but let me show you why that happens if i fix this again save this and go to my app right now you're still gonna see something interesting and that is if i put a breakpoint right here in this effect and i think this is something that some of you also asked in the questions as well that it always initializes with an empty array so if i refresh now since we have this effect in place this would trigger even when the store is initialized in the beginning with an empty array so what happens here is that since we have this local storage set item set inside the effect and it comes here with the state having empty to do's it first sets that in the application to empty so all we had before is gone now which means that now it's going to go to the api call and now when the to do's update just like this we have now the 20 to do's now it sets it now in a normal situation you might even not notice it when everything is working fine but when it doesn't then we have a problem but let's say if i do this now save this go to my app and at this point, if I go to application, you can see I had my to do's already right here. But since we have this initialization right here and we have the effect saving that thing as well, it comes down. And now since we have the state containing to do's empty, it essentially marks that as empty in my application. So I lost my to do's. This is not what we want to do. We only want the effect to work after our whole sort of setup has been initialized so there are different ways to do this but i think a very primitive way or a very simplistic way is to just mark our store as initialized by a variable so here we could do something like you know initial value or initialized so to say we can say boolean and here we are going to initialize that with false now when we have actually set our to do for the first time that is when we are going to mark this as initialized so here we are going to say initialize true and for the effect itself we only want this to happen when we have state initialized as the ai is suggesting so here if i do this then we are essentially not going to have this problem anymore so let's try with the correct api first now if i go and put the breakpoint here 
I'm going to refresh. You can see that it comes here with the state and the state has to do as an empty. But if I go down, it's not going to go inside and save that, which means that my application is still has the to do's, which is OK. And then once it gets the to do's with the array, then this is already initialized. So now it can go and save my to do's, which right now are 20 to do's. Now let's say something goes wrong. What happens then? So if I change this to some wrong URL, save this. Now let's see what happens. That so comes here with the empty to do's in this particular situation. Initializes false. It's not going to override my data, which is good. And now if I hit play, it's actually going to come with even the wrong API. It's going to come with the existing to do from local storage because we failed in this situation. So you can see that we already had a console error. Let me refresh and show you again. So if I refresh now, it comes initially into the effect. Then it goes to the API, gets the error because the endpoint doesn't really exist. Then it fetches the to do's from storage just like this. And then it comes into the effect and then proceeds forward with saving them. So now we have a good fallback of actually showing it from the API. And if that fails, then we have the local storage. Great. Now that we have that out of the way, let's proceed forward. I'm going to actually remove this one. And now let's talk about what happens if we try to actually add a to do or remove a to do. And I'm also going to fix this endpoint as well. Similar to how we injected the HTTP in on init, we can actually do the same in with methods as well. So I can go inside here and then I can make it work for both adding and toggling the to do. So for example, if I go with methods here, I can do the same thing. I can say HTTP equals and then inject HTTP client. And now for the add to do, I'm going to actually do this after I've actually saved my data. And I hate the fact that even before I'm typing and I know what I want to do, the AI is suggesting a lot of things. So in this case, I can say HTTP.post and you can see that I'm posting it on to do's in this particular situation, but I don't want to do, do it on the to do's. I want to do it on the user then ID, then to do. So here I can say users one and to do's. And then I'm passing it the new title and the completed set to false since it's a completely brand new to do. And once I have that, then I essentially do patch state. I don't want to push it to the end of the to do's list. I want to do it at the beginning. So I can go here and then I can say the saved to do is going to be on top and then the rest of them. Now I'm going to save this and let's try this out. So let's say I try to add a to do, but I'm offline and I can't really do that. Then that means that this to do is never going to be added. So if I say new to do hit add, you can see that this failed and I don't have the to do added at all. Let's say if I'm online and I try to do the same. So I say to do and if I hit add, it's going to mark this as done and then I have the to do added. And if I make this slow, you can also see, for example, if I say new to do, you're going to see that we will have the API call. And once it's done, only then we show the to do. So let's hit this. Now you can see it's loading. And once it's done, now we have the to do. So it is based on the API's response. That's what we wanted. And we're going to do the same thing for toggle to do, which is patch state, but we are going to use the HTTP patch in this particular case. So I'm going to cut this code. And here we are going to say HTTP dot patch, since we are going to update the to do in this case. And then here we can define that this is going to be to do item. And then we can also give this the URL. So here it's going to be this. So I'm, I'm just going to use this code and then I'm going to change the data when it comes to it. So let's quickly remove this guy. I'm going to patch state in this case. And now let's see what's happening. So I want to take all my current to do's. I'm going to find the to do with the to do ID that I'm trying to toggle. So I find the particular to do and I look at its completed property. Whatever that property is, I'm going to flip it with this not sign which means that I'm toggling the to do. Once I have that done, then I'm going to patch the state and then I'm going to do the exact same thing that I was doing before. So I'm going to take this to do and I'm going to mark it or I can just do the same thing here. So I say if I have the to do item with the to do ID, then I can just flip the completed property just like this. It's both the same things. However, I might want to do this once. So what I would do here is actually take the new to do property. So here I'm going to do something like cons new completed and take this value once and then I'm going to use it here and then also the other place as well. So here new completed as well, just optimizing this a bit. So I don't really have to use this to do at all. Now, of course, you might also want to handle error cases here as well which in turn would show some sort of toast or something. But essentially for the add to do and for the toggle to do in both cases, we are making the API calls and then we are making the decision of updating the state after it has been done. And I don't need anything for the change filter. So let's try this out now. So I'm going to go to my network and do no throttling, save this and now show you with slow 3G or 3G everything that we just discussed. For example, if I do new to do, 
If I add this, you can see that this makes the API call. Once it's done, we get the new to do added here. If I want to toggle it, I can just click this. Nothing is toggled until the API call is successful. Oh, now it says 201. Why does it say? So it says user ID and then to do's. Okay, so maybe this endpoint doesn't exist at all. And we just need to update the to do in this case. So for this, we need to go here and instead of in the patch where we are saying users want to do's, we just need to do's. So let's save this. Now we're going to try this again. I'm going to do no throttling and then I'm going to just change this to 3G and click this one. And there you go. You can see that we have it toggled after the API returns success. One of the things that you will notice or you might have a question already is where is my custom to do that I just added. So if I add something like this, it adds it, shows it, the API responds back with the correct data as well, but nothing is actually stored on the server. This is a fake API. This doesn't really add anything or toggles anything at all. It just returns back success no matter what API call we are hitting. So yeah, when you refresh this, you're not going to see that because the new, the actual data comes from the API, which doesn't have our custom added stuff to it. And there you go. To summarize what we did so far is we first went to our app config and we started with the HTTP client or providing the HTTP client to our application. The second thing that we did was to handle the initialization of our store, which means that when our store is initialized in the on init method inside with hooks, we essentially first make the API call. If we get an error, we use the local storage. If we don't get the error, then whatever we get from the API, we add those to the store. We also use the initialized variable as an addition to our store. So we can only run the effect of saving to local storage when the store has been initialized already or when we have retrieved once a value. And that was a question that some of you ask as well. Then we went ahead and we implemented the same for add to do. So we make the API call with the new to do and then we just patch it based on the response. And then we also looked at the toggle to do with the same approach. So we flipped the flag we did the patch call with the flipped flag and essentially we then patched the state based on which to do needs to be updated. With that said, we are at the end of this tutorial and thank you so much again for the really good feedback on the video. If there's something in particular you want me to work on next or create a tutorial about, let me know in the comments. And again, the Angular cookbook. If you're wondering different topics about Angular, be it animations, unit testing, end-to-end -end testing, progressive web apps, the book contains a lot of it. And you can see the reviews on Amazon, of course. With that said, Thanks again for watching and as always, happy coding.